moon is the Earth's only natural satellite. It has long served as a light in the night sky, shielded us from meteorites, shaped our hunting rituals, and we have told stories of mythical creatures and gods living on the moon. As stories turned to legends and the centuries passed, we began to wonder, could we also venture to the moon one day? The dream came a step closer during the early decades of the 20th century when Robert Goddard, an American physicist and inventor, suggested in 1920 that using a rocket to travel to the moon may one day be possible. Many editorials laughed at the idea and even said that to journey outside of Earth's atmosphere would be impossible. Dr. Goddard went on to create the world's first liquid fueled rocket in 1926. The first rocket that could fly into space was the V-2 ballistic missile created by the Nazis. The rocket would set a theme for the rest of the century as the choice was laid before us. Use our rockets to send us to the moon or use them to destroy our very own homes. The Cold War was the backdrop for the exploration of the moon and in 1969 the greatest exploratory achievement was set when Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon. The last moon mission was in 1972 and for almost 40 years no one has set foot on the moon since. So will we ever venture back to the moon? Why should we and what are the benefits of doing so? Colonizing the moon has a significant number of advantages over Mars or Venus. To resupply a permanent base on the moon is significantly cheaper than one on Mars. On top of this, a natural supply of water was discovered on the moon's south pole by the Indian Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft. NASA is already experimenting with growing plants in the moon, with a recent study published in the journal PLOS ONE suggesting that by partly using minerals from the lunar soil, it may be suitable for growing plants. Plants would not only supply food for a colony, but more importantly oxygen as well as scenery. With oxygen, water and food costs significantly reduced after initial base is set up, the cost of living on the moon may be relatively cheaper than once thought. As well as this, there are a number of commercial aspects to settling the moon. Helium-3 has accumulated over billions of years from the solar winds which blow the element onto the surface of the moon. Helium-3 is extremely valuable being worth over 120 times the value of gold. On Earth, the substance is extremely rare, but on the Moon it is abundant, and it could have a potential application as a fuel source for fusion power plants. The Moon's lack of an atmosphere could be used to our advantage. Constructing satellites on the surface of the Moon would allow them to get a much clearer signal than here on Earth, as there is no atmosphere on the Moon. On top of this, a significant amount of tourism to lunar colonies could bring in profits to any country of a well-developed colony. However, as of all mega-projects, there are a significant number of downsides as well. Low gravity, lunar dust, and the lack of atmosphere all pose significant health problems to any would-be colonizers. With no atmosphere, the cosmic radiation on the moon would be much greater than here on Earth. Even Mars has a partial and weak magnetic field. These factors taken into consideration can lead to muscle atrophy, radiation sickness and a whole number of other health problems without proper caution. Also, the cost of building a lunar colony could cost tens of billions of dollars, making it a very expensive endeavour. However, the cost of building a colony should not be a deterrent from settling the moon. The incredible achievement of immortalising our species, profiting from the tourism and mining, as well as making an incredible achievement, should all mitigate all these negative factors. Settling a new land has always been a challenge, just because this land is further away, should we just give up because it is too hard? Many countries are in the early stages of planning manned missions to the moon. There are a few, if any, real plans for a lunar colony. NASA is currently developing the Space Launch System, or SLS for short, which would pilot a manned module called the Orion spacecraft. The Orion spacecraft is set to travel around the moon in 2017 for a circumlunar mission. Explore an asteroid with humans in 2021, and there is a possible manned lunar return mission planned for 2022. While NASA has stated no plans for a permanent settlement, the possibility of returning to the moon may inspire future plans to colonize. Other countries such as Russia and China are also conducting ongoing missions to the moon, and both countries plan to establish lunar bases on an unofficial timeline, with settlement beginning within two decades. However, it may be the private sector that reaches the moon first. Space Adventures, a space tourism company, 
is offering a trip to circumnavigate the moon by 2017 for a price tag of $150 million. The first lunar tourist would set up a new market of tourism, but could then be followed in the decades to come by trips to the surface of the moon and be extremely wealthy. Finally, in the long run, there is also the possibility of partially terraforming the moon. By bombarding the moon with comets pulled in from the Oort cloud, a region of icy comets beyond Pluto left over from the formation of the solar system, the moon's rotation could be sped up from 28 days to 60 hours. On top of this, the bombardment by asteroids and comets would also create a tenuous atmosphere. The moon does not have enough gravity to retain an atmosphere, but gases above its surface can be held for millions of years. While the moon will never be exactly like Earth, some predict that the moon will be a steamy tropical paradise, as it is too small to have deserts, greenery and seas would entirely cover its surface, and with a 60 hour day made possible by speeding its rotation, incredible sunsets could last for hours. The moon will continue to be a long term goal for humanity, as our space programs continue to improve and become grander in scale and vision. One day our ancestors may look at us from the moon, and wonder just why we spent so long waiting to get up there. However, what if humanity ultimately does ignore the moon and sets its focus to Mars instead?